Welcome to episode 29 of the Automation Podcast, brought to you by InsightsInAutomation.com. I'm Sean Tierney, your host, and on today's show, we're going to talk about remote access options. So this is a very common question I get all the time. People want to know how to remotely access their programmable controllers, their HMIs, and their control system overall, uh, you know, when it's halfway across the country or halfway across the world. So we're going to cover some basic remote access options. Uh, many of you may already be familiar with these. Some of these are all of these. But it's such a common question that uh, we're dedicating this episode of the Automation Podcast just to remote access options. So one of the first and easiest ways to remotely access a system is to use a virtual private network. Most of the Fortune 500, in fact, most large companies have VPNs in place so their executives and managers can access their company network from home. So if you can find the right person in IT, they will create for you a VPN login that will allow you access to your control system and typically only access to your control system. They don't want you in their SAP or ERP system, uh, you know, fishing for data that you're not authorized to look at. Now, you may be saying, oh, IT will never help me with that. Well, you're wrong, because I know of hundreds of installations around the country where the end user site has given an OEM or an integrator VPN access just to the equipment they need to access. So it is possible. It's being done every day. And hopefully you're not one of those unfortunate people who run into an IT department that's not up with the uh, current standards of remote access. Now... Similar to remote access is something we call remote desktop or terminal services or Citrix. In some cases, the IT departments of these big companies may not want your computer accessing their network. They may be worried that you will have some spyware or a virus or something that will find its way out on their network, even though they've put shackles on you to only see and access the control system you're supposed to be working on. In those cases, sometimes it's common for the IT department to set up a terminal server or a Citrix server, or today now a remote desktop services server, to allow you to remotely control a computer that's in their office and has your programming software on it. Let's say RS Logix or View Studio, RS Links, or some other software package. Now, it can kind of be tricky to set up some of the Rockwell software to work on a terminal server. But if you go to the knowledge base, you'll see they document a lot of information about that, so it's not insurmountable. And the advantage here for the IT department is the software is running on their computer, which they can lock down, which they can have virus software scanning, and they can have firewalls blocking everything except the ports that Rockwell makes available. And it should also be noted that you get, with a desktop operating system, you also get a one client remote desktop license as well. So those Windows desktop operating system users out there, you may want to research that with Microsoft because you should have a single connection, almost like a PC Anywhere type connection, to your uh, desktop operating system. You know, it's something Microsoft just includes with the uh, operating system at no charge. And that's a good point to talk about remote access and control software. So I think everybody's heard about PC Anywhere. I don't know anybody actually using it these days. But in the 90s, it was huge, and the biggest, most popular package of the day for remote access or remote control software. And what I mean by that is, this is software that lets you remotely control a computer, similar to terminal services, similar to remote desktop, but it's a little software package that runs on that computer that only accepts authenticated remote users, and once they log in, they just are allowed to remotely control that computer from wherever they are. Now, as time has gone on, there's been some cloud-based applications that have really given PC Anywhere a run for its money, specifically ones I've tried, GoToMyPC or LogMeIn.com. Those are web-based services that allow you to remote access your PC using client software and going through the Internet. And then there's the pretty cool freeware known as VNC, or Virtual Network Computing. Think of it as PC Anywhere, but free. It's pretty cool. You can set it up and use it at no cost and... uh, and it's actually become a standard in many companies today. Now let's say you're in the sticky situation where it's not a large company where the control system has been installed and they don't have an IT department with a VPN. And let's also say that there's no computer remotely that you have access to. In other words, you're not going to be able to set up a terminal server, you're not going to be able to set up PC Anywhere or VNC. Um, What are your options there? Because everything we've talked about so far requires a computer on the other end. 
Well, this is where we start talking about remote access hardware. These are small devices you can put in your control panel that kind of act like a, uh, a VPN and allow you to connect remotely to your control system without the need of having a PC on site. The first one I want to talk about is very easy to use um, and it's from Spectrum Controls. It's called the Web Port. Now you may have seen an older product from Spectrum Controls called the e and I think e is actually selling it direct now. That product is nowhere near as easy to use as the new Web Port from Spectrum. When I first got my e I had to write my own book on how to use it. When I first picked up the new Web Port, I didn't have to read anything. I just logged in, created my account, and away I went. Now, I'm not using all the advanced features of it. There's things it can do that, that I haven't even figured out yet. But as far as setting it up for remote access, it's fairly easy. One page of notes is enough to get you through the setup and configuration and get you connected. Now, this is truly a VPN. It puts your computer onto that local control network. So what that means is, if you ship the system out there without any default gateways and your PLCs or your panel views, connecting through some other means may not put you on that network, and therefore you're not going to be able to communicate. However, because the web port actually puts you on the local network with the other Ethernet devices, they do not have to have a proper default gateway put in them for you to be able to program them. I've seen this several times. It works very well and uh, in most cases most of us are not putting a default gateway in although that's a subject for another day. We probably all should be. Now the web port we just talked about is typically connected to the wide area network that could be going to a cable modem, a DSL modem, or to a port in the switch that the company allows internet access to. And then it has a four port switch built in which can either go directly to your control system and devices or could be just connected into your existing industrial switch. The web port also comes in a cellular version. So you can actually put an antenna and cable on this guy and it'll be connected to the cellular network which will then connect it to the wider internet. Now this doesn't mean you have to connect to it with your own cell phone. You can still connect to the internet the way you always connect to the internet. However, this will put your control system on the internet so it's accessible from locations that have no wired internet access. If you do this, read up about firewalls, the firewall protection inside the web port, and also I highly recommend you password all your control systems and lock them down. So if somebody's hacking the cellular network and trying to break the web port's firewall, you do not want them gaining access to your control system remotely. And this goes for all control systems that you're going to be remotely accessing. I highly recommend you implement all the security features of the control system that are available. So passwording, locking down programs. I'm not saying lock out your end user from them. I'm saying lock them down so you have a second level of security protecting you from somebody on the outside trying to hack your system. You usually get that automatically when you do the VPN for, through the IT network. But even then, don't, don't make assumptions. Protect yourself. The most secure system is a system that can't be connected to from outside the building. So if you're going to allow connections from outside the building, use all the locks and mechanisms you can to protect your system from being tampered with. Last but not least, and this is a throwback to the 90s, is remote access via dial-up modems. And Rockwell actually has two great little options here. If you're stuck with a system that's deployed where the only access you have is plain old telephone lines and dial-up connections, then Rockwell has two options. They call them their RAD kits. And one is a dial-up modem to serial port, and another is a dial-up modem to a four-port Ethernet switch. And when these units came out in the 90s, we promptly stopped selling the off-the-shelf uh, modems because those were a nightmare to try to configure. The firmwares were always changing, which changed the AT commands, and sometimes they'd lose their programs. And as soon as these came out, and we knew that we could set them up easily and efficiently just by using a bunch of dip switches, and they would never change and they would always work, we just stopped using those off-the-shelf modems. So remember, if you've got to do dial-up, I know you're probably laughing right now, but if you're somewhere where you have to do dial-up, check out the rad kits from Rockwell. They come with every cable and every setting you would need to connect up to any Allen Bradley PLC. Well, we've covered everything I had on the list here. We covered using VPN technology. We covered using remote desktop terminal services in Citrix. We covered uh, connecting via PC Anywhere, log me in, go to my PC and VNC. 
We also talked about the web port, both the WAN connection and the cellular connection. And finally, we talked about the RAD kits from Rockwell and the dial-up connection. So, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or corrections, please don't hesitate to share them with me at theautomationpodcast.com. And if you'd like to find out about my soon-to-be-released microprogrammable controller training course, please check out my website, theautomationschool.com. And that's it for this episode of the Automation Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Tierney, and until next time, peace.